our foreheads, malas about our shoulders. This is how we, a group of 14 Indian Americans, began our Bharat Yatra, our voyage to India. Arriving in New Delhi, we were unsure what the next two weeks would bring. But what we knew for certain was that we were embarking on an adventure to find the true spirit of India. And so, with great enthusiasm and curiosity, we boarded a bus to head off to India's largest province, Rajasthan. Rajasthan is a land of 60 million princes and princesses who don turbans and saris as colorful as their martial traditions and regal history. Their land is dotted by innumerable forts, palaces, and shrines, each carrying its own unique story of honor, valor, and piety. We were still strangers to each other as we charged onto the first adventure of the day. But together, we roam through the celebrated Havelis of Mandawa. Haveli means a private mansion. A rich merge and the business class family used to live in this Haveli. Though now a desert outpost, it was once a hub of international trade and commerce. A fact attested by the spacious Havelis, or mansions, built by merchants in the days of Imperial India. We admired a past that we could touch and feel with our very own hands. In contrast to the glorious testimonies of wealth, prestige, and power, the bricklayers we visited next showed us a more modest present. While we watched, they systematically hauled large red bricks into a truck. These bricklayers made 50 rupees each for every thousand bricks in the truck. Per day, they managed to load five or six trucks. Early today, we went to uh, a kiln, a, a brick factory, and this is the same technology that they've been using for thousands of years. Exactly. Literally, the citizens of Harpa and Mahindadaro would have absolutely no problem in recognizing that sort of structure today. A lot of people, when they come to India, they just hit up the big hot spots. And I feel like you can't really learn that much about India, about true India at least, if, right. if that's all you do. Right. So I feel like it's making it a, a richer experience for all of us. After we flagged down a few passing auto rickshaws, we rode to a school for physically challenged children. We saw the devotion of teachers at the Asha Kajarna School, who dedicate their lives to educating children with hearing, speaking, and cognitive difficulties. Upstairs, in a classroom for deaf and mute children, two boys recited the alphabet in sign language, which is different in Hindi than in English. As we were about to leave the school, we saw that students in one of the classrooms downstairs started to dance. We were drawn by the music and felt compelled to dance along with them. Forgetting where we were or who we were supposed to be, all of us, regardless of age, size, or disability, threw up our hands in delight. Also in Nawalgarh is the Anandilal Bodar Museum, where the folk culture of Eastern Rajasthan was on full display. In fact, we even had the opportunity to leave our imprints on this land of frescoes. No less impressive was the pottery being sculpted just a few yards outside the museum. We witnessed how a raw piece of earth is shaped into one of those sinuous earthen pots found everywhere in India's cities and villages. And as we watched with rapt attention, we couldn't help but feel that these small experiences in India were serving to shape us as well, into the human beings that we would like to be. We forged ahead next day and drove 225 kilometers to Bikaner. We witnessed the splendor of Bikaner and its main fort, Junagar. Touring the fort, we could not escape the opulence and diversity of Rajasthan's heritage. Indeed, Despite being only a few miles away, the culture had changed dramatically. Art over here is so completely different. 
when we were in the Shikavati region, it was all about those beautifully drawn frescoes everywhere. Yeah. Over here, it's more about the delicate screen work, the jollies. I just think it just goes to show how beautiful India really is. Our next adventure completely astounded us. We visited the temple of Karni Mata, a goddess whose children, her devotees believe, are reincarnated as mice. Within the confines of her temple, we were surprised to find hundreds of mice scurrying across the marble floors, unrestrained and unafraid of our presence. This temple is approximately 650 years old, and there was a very holy woman. She was called Karni Mata. She was the first who came here in the city. Visiting the temple, you know, I actually got to touch a mouse. It was actually an amazing experience. I actually really enjoyed it, and it took me out of that comfort zone, but the rewards were so much more than that. And I felt that this trip will be continuing that trend. I was really frightened to go in there, but in the end, it helped me appreciate the respect the religion has for all beings, and whether it is a human or a, a mouse. It's not just a belief in God, but it's also the suspension of belief in everyday events. That is, your ordinary life can be superseded by extraordinary things. It's really amazing to think of India as such a diverse place that it has a temple for everything. Back at the hotel, we were captivated by the dance of a local 13-year-old. Reality conceded to illusion as we saw her perform on top of bottles and on swords with flaming pots stacked upon her head. And when she was finished, she smiled and bowed her head, completely unharmed. Dodging cows, buffaloes, pigs, sheep, and braving rain-drenched roads, we began to snake our way down the Indo-Pakistani border southwestwards towards the desert town of Jaisalmer. Along the route, we stopped by the town of Pokhran, where we saw a less opulent but no less endearing fort before continuing on. After a long ride, we finally arrived at the Golden City, where we received an imperial welcome. We then wandered through the medieval alleys of Jaisalmer to reach the topmost ramparts of the famed Golden Fort. Behind us is the majesty of Jaisalmer, uh, the Golden City, and it's incredibly amazing to think that all around us is just desert, and they've made this marvel, really. Just they've taken a mud hill and they've just put so much sandstone on here that it's it's just amazing. These are the only two forts in Asia where people are living in them. And it's just incredible to be a part of their daily lives and watch how, how they go through the day. Along the way, we visited the temples funded and built by the Jain merchants who helped to make the city so fabulously wealthy. I was completely amazed by the detailed work in these Jain temples. Like, it, it really felt like a sacred place and I really felt at peace. It just opens up your eyes to show that India has so many religions, but at the same time, it helps unite people of all different types. And it was just really breathtaking, like amazing to see that such carvings and handwork went in so many thousands of years ago. People think that if Indian culture is very, very monolithic, right. that there's only one culture of India, when actually it's such diversity that it kind of boggles the mind. Even in the small area, we've gone just a couple of miles away, and we find that the culture is sometimes very drastically different. As we continued to wander the streets, we saw the proud denizens of the Golden Fort and imbibed their local culture. afternoon, after our visit to Jaisalmer Fort and Pokharan, we rode camels across the sand dunes of the Thar Desert. 
We thought only romantics rode camels into the sunset along a barren desert. It's really amazing to think that we've traveled thousands and thousands of miles to come here to these sand dunes to see how pristine they are. And yet the locals, um, many of them, they uh, participate in, in, in defiling it by this sort of uh, littering. Um, so I think there has to be some education about telling how special this place really is. People are not taking care of like nature's greatness. And I think one of the ways that we can help out is making them aware of how to actually recycle or how to um, get rid of things that they don't need rather than just throwing it. It's really sad and it's that it's that attitude that the people bring to here that and it it doesn't it doesn't really affect them but it affects everyone else. We were expecting a desolate landscape devoid of people and wildlife. But when we arrived we were surprised to find a local culture as well as unique habitat for desert animals. We were deeply impressed by Rajasthan's natural beauty and felt strongly that its unspoiled nature should be both respected and preserved. But the night was still young. About 15 miles away lay the cursed village of Kuldara. Abandoned since the 19th century, the denizens disappeared overnight in mysterious circumstances that we have yet to make sense of. They say that all that remains are ghosts. But in our exploration, we could only find a few gnats and flies. Next morning, firmly back in the world of the living, we saw some of India's youngest citizens, receiving not only a modern education, but also through the example of their hardworking, but often underappreciated teachers, learning what it means to manifest the timeless spirit of India. Before we knew it, we entered the Marwar region and its capital, Jodhpur, the second largest city of Rajasthan. There, we visited its most distressed citizens at MD Mathurdas Hospital and had the pleasure of meeting with Dr. Siddharth Dev, Dr. Sangvi, and numerous other doctors who uphold the standards of modern evidence-based medicine while channeling that same eternal spirit of India to heal their patients and restore their dignity. We've come here to visit India in order to visit your state and visit your city and visit your hospital to see how people live and see how we can help in the future. We have a lot of patients of ischemic heart disease. At the same time, rheumatic heart disease is also so prevalent. So all variety of cases we have over here. This is the cath lab that is doing, after doing the angiography, we keep the patients here for observation. Angioplasty is free, being a government hospital. The stent that we use and the balloons that we use, they are taken at the cost to cost basis. 250 to 300 people are from below poverty line. Nearly 25 to 30 percent of the patients, they get benefited from this place. About 65, every investigation is free. All widows are free. All uh, destitutes are free. What I saw yesterday was heroic people at the government hospital who were fighting against the tide of apathy, who decided to actually do something instead of just letting things just be and accepting things as they are. So they give me a lot of hope and they give me a lot of inspiration really that I can be a part of this project, this great Indian project that was started over 60 years ago and continues onwards due to the heroic work, the heroic deeds of people like them. In the nearby town of Mandor, this type of story was replicated again at the Nimba Nimandi Leper Ashram. We're here at the Leprosy Center today, and um, one of the most interesting and actually most heartbreaking things we have seen is, rather than an actual physical disease, um, leprosy has become a social stigma for all of the patients that are living here. <laughs> पर अब क्या है कि इनके घरवाले इनको रखते नहीं बोले कि क्या पता हमको नहीं हो जाए वैसे पेशेंट नेगेटिव है rejected by society despite being cured of the disease these people are wholly dependent on the compassion of men like dr pandit leprosy कितना common है यहां पे ये mostly जो नमी वाली भूमि होती है ना 
At the leper ashram, they are given not only food, medications, and housing, but also social support, and perhaps, most importantly, hope for the future. The lepers at the ashram help to run a safe haven for cows, a goshala, where old dairy cows, exhausted of their supply of milk and thus useless to farmers, are taken care of. These lepers demonstrate that when given the opportunity to serve, even the most dejected members of society can help in its progress. Instilled with a rejuvenated sense of inspiration, we then visited an old age home, a private institution started by one woman with a vision. We were inspired by her dedication and resolve that we would return to aid in her cause. Service is not charity. Service has a very particular purpose that not only helps someone else, but helps ourselves in the process. In this sense, service is more like altruism. When we help someone else, when we give food to someone else, when we give shelter to someone else, we become better human beings. In the medieval pathways of the Marangar Fort, we walked in the footsteps of Rudyard Kipling and understood why he famously declared that the fort was not constructed by man, but rather was the work of angels, fairies, and giants. The fort was started to build in 1759. Why the people had painted their houses blue? Because in the Hindu religion, we are having three main gods, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, and their skin color is blue. And the Brahmins had to do the work of priests, so they inspired from them and they start painting their houses blue. We took a break from the bus for some time to explore the social and natural landscape of rural Rajasthan by a jeep safari. There we met the proud Bushnoi people, whose villages are only a 45 minute jeep ride away. As one of the world's earliest environmentalists, their only fealty lies to the land, its plants, and its animals, which they worship and preserve as manifestations of the divine. It seems like life for people who live in villages is, is more about survival than it is um, for fulfilling desires. The only way to really get through a day of survival is by showing compassion to each other. I think that's the reason why this country is so beautiful. Next, we sojourn to Pushkar for spiritual scholarship. It's where creation itself is said to have taken place. Pushkar is renowned for its importance in not only Hinduism, but also in certain sects of Judaism. With open minds, we participated in ageless rites and rituals set in the tranquility and beauty of the revered place. Later that day, we visited Pushkar's main government hospital. This one was much smaller than the one in Jodhpur, but the doctors were just as dedicated. They faced very different challenges practicing in this semi-rural area, but seeing their selfless work inspired us to get involved and prompted us to think of ways that we can help India's poor and sick. The biggest challenge here is uh, mainly the geriatric age group and the uh, ladies with anemia. The ladies need to be educated more about the nutrition. I deliver uh, two, three baby every night. Darka. Seven 
कोविड पेशेंट ऑल काइंड ऑफ इमरजेंसी इन स्पाइट ऑफ दिस वी आर गिविंग वेरी गुड सर्विसेज ही वाज अ वेरी सॉफ्ट स्पोकन मैन ही वाज वेरी कॉम ही वाज वेरी सीरेन एंड ही वाज इन द मिडल ऑफ लाइक 30 और 40 पेशेंट्स वर स्क्रीमिंग देयर फैमिलीज एंड दे वर आस्किंग फॉर व्हाट ड्रग बी नीडेड नेक्स्ट एंड आई मीन दैट्स द काइंड ऑफ मेडिसिन आई थिंक दैट रियली अलाउज लाइक order to come out of chaos it was really astounding that there's so, such limited resources but that there it's it's possible to to actually bring something good out of it the government set like a cap on how many doctors can actually work there and i think it was like 7 so i we were all kind of puzzled right when we heard that and just just to go off what you said i think there definitely needs more attention needs to be brought to more rural um medical hospitals and clinics Our next stop was the city of Ajmer and the Badir Vidyalaya, a school for the hearing and speaking impaired. Despite their pay being delayed over 7 months, their teachers continued to educate their pupils simply out of their love of teaching. Hamare yahan jo academic ke alawa jo hai technical education tak bhi bachon ko thoda dhyan diya jata hai kyunki ye bacche sunte nahi hai bolte nahi hai. Isliye inme language ki ek kami hoti hai jo पूरी नहीं हो पाती इनको रोजगार के लिए हम लोग सिलाई है कारपेंट्री है सीट मेटल है वेल्डिंग है और कंप्यूटर है ड्राइंग पेंटिंग ब्यूटिशियन ये क्लासेस चलाते रहते हैं समय समय पर तो इनको रोजगार के लिए हम लोग तैयार करते हैं that only need time to be discovered and these teachers are giving them time there are people who do it not for the money they they do it to see the smiles on these children's faces and to get them somewhere and to keep pushing them clearly the spirit of india transcends the boundaries of language and then we visited darga sharif the tomb of the saint who perhaps best represents this compassionate spirit of india Over 800 years ago, Hazrat Muinuddin Chishti underwent his own yatra through the narrow passes of the Hindu Kush mountain. Here, he put his faith into practice and spread the doctrines of universal love and compassion, earning the esteem of Hindu and Muslim alike and endearing himself in the hearts of all the well-wishers of India. It was not just a Muslim place, it was actually respected by people of all religion. Personally, I felt very calm there. Although I was initially intimidated, um I felt very at peace and I can, you can actually really feel the spirituality everywhere. One of the things that really struck me was the use of flowers that they put on the tomb of uh, Hazrat Khwaja ji, which is very similar to what we saw actually in Pushkar Lake when we were putting flowers into the lake itself. Pushkar itself as as we learned is Pushpa in flower and kar meaning hand the hand that puts the flowers there how people had so much reverence and devotion towards both people and came with their hopes and petitions to god really i thought that this was really common between both the hindu religious sites and the muslim religious sites that we went to The next stop was the capital of Rajasthan, Jaipur, also known as the Pink City. Among its crowded streets, we visited the immaculate marble Birla Temple and then headed to the ancient monuments built by the descendants of the legendary Raja Man Singh. We boarded the back of elephants to climb up the ramparts of Amer Fort. visited the former home of Jaipur's royalty and admired the fine craftsmanship of its shish mahal and the maharani's zenana
After delving into Jaipur's rich past, we explored its rich present. However, instead of measuring its riches in terms of jewels and textiles, we now measured it in terms of hands and feet. At Bhagwan Mahavir Viklang Sayata Samiti, we witnessed how the Indian spirit continues to inspire the world as a whole. We are Mehta. I am the founder and chief patron of this society. I set up this organization in 1975. People come from all parts of India. Everybody who comes here is given the assistance totally free of charge. Because almost 99% of the people are below the poverty line. But if you go to Jaipur somehow, you will be taken care of. Poorest of the poor people turn up here. Now that perception, my mind, is one of our, one of our biggest assets. As it is in the USA, the comparable pin would cost about $10,000. This cost us about $45. In a, by now, we have about 1.17 million people who are our beneficiaries. Supposing you want to send money, the parents want to send money, welcome. D.R. Mehta from Jaipur Foot, seeing him so passionate about his cause and so willing to help others, it makes me want to go out and do something, possibly fundraising for J4 Foot. First we take the measurements, and then according to measurements, we prepare the lens and fit it. Person reported here is trading free. They provided him uh, the accommodations to live, free food, free limb, and when he goes back, we give him uh, bus fare or the train fare. <laughs> The person running the program has devoted his entire life, uh, his entire work to helping people whose needs are really unaddressed in the Indian community. The power of these small moldings to change people's lives was most visibly demonstrated when we lost in a race to an amputee with a Jaipur foot. Indeed, the compassionate spirit of India can make miracles happen. What we have seen, we cannot unsee. What we have experienced, we cannot forget. We will remember these moments over and over again, and we will come back to them time and time again, and we'll think to ourselves how we can help, how we can make ourselves useful in their everyday lives. So our yatra continues, even though our physical yatra may be ending. And that is the most beautiful experience of all.